Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on graphing polynomial functions. So if you remember, we left off at graphing polynomial functions. So we're going to start with a strategy on how to graph polynomial functions, which will review everything we discussed in the previous video. So if we want to graph a polynomial function that looks like this, we start by determining the shape of the polynomial function on the ends of the graph. So we use the leading coefficient test to determine the end behavior. So the graph will either rise or fall to the left or to the right. We'll determine that first. Once we have the end behavior, then we'll start by finding the x-intercepts by making the y value zero in the polynomial function, which will give you a polynomial equation that you can solve. We'll solve by factoring and we'll try to have the complete factorization. So x subtract r raised to the k. If that appears in the complete factorization of the polynomial function, then k is called the multiplicity of the real zero r. If k is even number, the graph will touch the x-axis at the x-intercept and turn around. If the multiplicity is odd, the graph will cross the x-axis at the x-intercept. And we discussed this in the previous video. If the multiplicity is greater than one, then the graph will appear to flatten out near the x-intercept. Once we have the x-intercepts, find the y-intercept by making x equal to zero in the polynomial function. We might be able to use symmetry so if the graph has y-axis symmetry, it should satisfy this property. All the x's are replaced with negative x, and the function will stay the same after you simplify. If it has origin symmetry, replace all the x's with negative x, and the function will change its sign. It will be the opposite of the original function. And the last thing that we can use to graph polynomial functions is the fact that the maximum number of turning points in a polynomial function graph is n subtract 1 if n is the degree of the polynomial function. So if n is the, the degree, then you can have at most n minus 1 turning points. And remember, turning points are where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So this is a way we can check to see whether the graph is drawn correctly. So in example five, we're going to graph a couple polynomial functions. So number one, we're going to graph f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared subtract 4x subtract 8. We're going to determine the intercepts, the zeros, the end behavior, and analyzing the behavior of the function near it's real zero. So does the graph cross or touch the x-axis? That's what that was referring to. So let's start with the first step. This function is a polynomial function of degree three. The highest power of x is three, which is an odd number. And the leading coefficient is 1. So positive 1 is the leading coefficient. So if you look back at the end behavior, if the degree is odd and the co leading coefficient is positive, the graph will fall to the left and rise to the right. So once we have the end behavior, now we can start by finding the real zeros. So find the zeros of the polynomial function. And remember how we can do this. Take the function f of x and set the entire function equal to zero. So you might recognize this, this polynomial function from the previous video. 
we were interested in finding its zeros in the previous vid video as well. So we factored by grouping. So we group the first two terms and we group the last two terms. And we factor out the GCF. X squared was in common in the first group, X plus 2. And negative 4 was in common in the second group, X plus 2 remaining. And then we notice that there's an X plus 2 in common. So X plus 2 and an X squared subtract 4 is remaining from each of the two terms. So X squared minus 4, that's a difference of squares, so it's not completely factored yet. X squared minus 4 is factors as X plus 2, X subtract 2. And now we know how it factors completely. X plus 2 appears twice, so X plus 2 all squared, times X subtract 2, and that equals 0. So once we have the complete factorization, now we can find the zeros. x plus 2 equals 0, which gives us x equals negative 2. And this factor occurred two times for x plus 2. So this x equals negative 2 has multiplicity 2, which is an even number. The other 0 comes from x minus 2 equals 0, and this gives us x equals positive 2. This factor only occurred one time, so its multiplicity is 1. And 1 is an odd number. So we found the zeros, we found the, multiplic the multiplicities, now we're ready to determine what is the behavior of the function near the real zeros. So the graph of f of x crosses the x-axis when the multiplicity is odd. So the multiplicity is odd at x, when x equals 2. So it crosses the x-axis at 2 comma 0. And since the multiplicity is 2 when x equals negative 2, the graph touches the x-axis at negative 2 comma 0 and turns around. So that's the behavior of the function near the zeros. It will cross the x-axis at x equals 2, and it will touch the x-axis and turn around at x equals negative 2. That's because of the multiplicity are even or odd. Okay, so now we're ready to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is much easier to find. It's when x equals 0. So go back to your function and replace all the x x is with 0. So 0 cubed plus 2 times 0 squared. Subtract 4 times 0. Subtract 8. And this gives us negative 8. So 0 comma negative 8 is the y-intercept. Alright, and then there's one last thing we can do. Since the degree is 3 of the polynomial function, there will be, at most, two turning points in the graph. So that was the last thing we talked about in the strategy for graphing. If the degree is 3, you can have, at most, one less than that, than one less than the degree, so at most two turning points. Alright, once we have this information, we are ready to graph. So this is going to be a rough sketch of what this polynomial function's graph will look like. We only have the x-intercepts and the y-intercept to graph. So it will be very it'll be a very rough sketch.
All right, start with the x-intercepts. The graph will cross the x or it'll touch or cross the x-axis at two comma zero. That's an x-intercept. Negative two comma zero. That was an x-intercept. So the graph will either cross or touch at this point. And we also had a y-intercept, which was negative eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's the y-intercept. All right, so let's start by looking at what is happening on the far left end of the graph. Does the graph go up or does the graph go down? So our end behavior said the graph fell or falls to the left. So that means the graph is going to start by increasing as you go to the right. It falls as you go to the left. So the graph comes up. At negative two comma zero, we have to pass through this point or touch and stay on the side, stay on the same side. At negative two zero, we touch the x-axis and turn around. So the graph comes up. Make sure it's a rounded curve, and it will touch the x-axis and stay on the same side. It'll turn back around. The graph will come down. It has to go through the y-intercept. We don't know how far the graph goes down. It might go down even further than negative 8. But it does have to turn back around because we still have one point the graph has to either touch or cross. So when we get to 2 comma 0, the graph crosses the x-axis. So we cross the x-axis and go back to the end behavior. We need to rise as we go to the far right end of the graph. And that's what this graph's doing. So the graph will have end behavior up to the right, down to the left. It will touch the x-axis and turn around at negative 2, 0. Cross the x-axis at 2, 0. And it will pass through the y-intercept at 0, negative 8. And there's a way to check how many turning points do we have. There's one here where it changes from increasing to decreasing. And there's one here where it changes from decreasing to increasing. So two turning points. So this graph is of the polynomial x cubed plus 2x squared, subtract 4x, subtract 8. All right, so this gives us one way to graph polynomial functions. Let's try another example. All right, this time we're going to graph the polynomial function g of x equals negative x plus 3 in parentheses to the second power, x subtract 2, which is to the third power, and then that's times x plus 1. So notice that this polynomial function is already in factored form. So let's start the same way as we did the previous problem. Determine what the end behavior of the graph is. So that is coming from the degree and the leading coefficient. So there are some advantages of having the function already factored, and this is one of the disadvantages. We can't easily look at this function and determine the degree unless you want to multiply this out, but that would take some time to multiply it out. You would have to do x plus 3 times x plus 3, get that answer. Take x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2, get that answer, and multiply by x plus 1. So you multiply all those together and the negative one on the outside as well. But it turns out there is a way to figure out the degree from factored form. You want to find what's going to be, what will be the highest power of x, or the largest power of x. If we took x plus 3 times x plus 3, that would give us x squared. So we, right now we have the highest power is 2. You have x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2. You'll have x times x times x. That gives you degree 3, 
And remember, if you multiply, and these are, are being multiplied because it's in factored form, you add the exponents. So, so far, you get x squared from this when you multiply it out. You would get x cubed from this factor multiplied out. And then we have x to the first power here. So plus one more. Looks like this will be degree 6, which is an even number. The leading coefficient is not as direct as the last problem as well. The leading coefficient, you need to determine what's the number the coefficient going to be in front of x to the sixth power. This will give us x positive 1x squared. This will give us 1x cubed. 1x, but then we have a negative on the outside. So negative 1 times 1x squared, 1x cubed, 1x. So leading coefficient is negative 1. So negative. So if the degree is even and leading coefficient is negative, the end behavior is falls to the left, falls to the right. So that's how we can determine the end behavior if the polynomial is already in factored form. So now let's go on to find the zeros. Find the zeros of the polynomial function. This is where if the polynomial is in factored form it's really helpful. g of x equals the opposite of x plus 3 all to the second, x minus 2 all to the third, times x plus 1. We set the whole function equal to 0, or the y value equal to 0, but it's already been factored for us. That's great. x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. Each of these factors could be 0. At least one of the factors has to be 0. So that tells us the zeros are negative 3, positive 2, or negative 1. So now we can determine the multiplicities. Of each of these zeros, which will determine the behavior near the x-intercepts. Let's start with x equals negative 3. x equals negative 3 came from the factor x plus 3. And that factor occurred twice. So the multiplicity is 2. And 2 is an even number. The next is x equals 2 x equals 2 came from the factor x minus 2, and that's x minus 2 cubed. So multiplicity is 3, which is an odd number. And the last 0 was x equals negative 1, and that came from the factor x plus 1, and that has multiplicity 1. The factor only occurred one time, and 1 is an odd number. So now that we have the multiplicities, we can determine what the behavior of the function is near the x-intercepts. The graph of g of x crosses the x-axis when the multiplicity is odd. So crosses the x-axis at negative 1 because the multiplicity is odd to negative 1 comma 0. And the multiplicity is 3, which is an odd multiplicity, when x is 2. So the graph will also cross at 2 comma 0. And the graph touches the x-axis and turns around. when the multiplicity is even, and it was even when x is equal to negative 3. So negative 3 comma 0. 
that gives us the end behavior of the graph, or the, the end behavior of the graph and the behavior of the graph near the, the real zeros. So now let's talk about the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x equals zero. So this one is not as easy as the last problem, especially since this polynomial is in factored form already. So take all the x values and make them zero, negative, zero plus three, that was to the second power, zero subtract two to the third power, and zero plus one. So negative on the outside, three squared, negative two cubed times one. Three squared is nine. Negative two cubed is negative eight. And one is one. So it looks like it's 72. Positive 72 is the y-intercept. Zero, negative 72. And then the last thing we can do is determine how many turning points we can have at most. The degree of this polynomial was six. We did that when we talked about end behavior. That means the graph of g of x has at most five turning points. Now, we might have less than five turning points, but we have no more than five. All right, so now we have all this information, we can graph, provide a rough sketch of this polynomial function. Keep in mind, we want to graph the y-intercept 0, 0,72. All right, start with the x-intercepts. x-intercept at negative 3. There's an x-intercept at negative 1. There's an x-intercept at positive 2. Okay, so that takes care of the x-intercepts. The y-intercept was 0, 72. So I might want to count by tens. So that way it can actually fit. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 72 would be slightly above 70, 0, 72, y-intercept. Okay, so now start, just like we did with the last problem, with the end behavior. The graph falls to the left, and we should end falling to the right. So if the graph is falling to the left, it'll start down here. All right, so the graph is increasing right now because it falls as you go to the left. It comes up to negative 3, 0 and touches the x-axis and turns around at negative 3, 0. So it comes up, makes a rounded curve, and turns around. So there's one turning point. The graph comes down. We don't know how far down the graph goes but it has to turn around to get back up to the x-intercept at negative 1. So it turns around, so there's another turning point. At negative 1, the graph crosses the x-axis. So it crosses, then it must go through the y-intercept next, so it comes up, crosses the y, and crosses the y-axis. Again, we don't know how high the graph goes, it might go even higher than 72. But it has to turn around, so there's three turning points. It has to turn around because it has to go through one more point on the x-axis. And at 2, 0, it 
crosses the x-axis at 2 comma 0. So it comes down to this x-intercept and crosses. And we should have ended falling as we go to the right. And this graph does. So this is a, a sketch of this polynomial function, which was in factored form. So we did one example of a graphing a polynomial function where it was not factored, and we had to factor to find the zeros and the multiplicities. But there were some advantages of, of knowing what the degree was in the previous problem and the leading coefficient. So we could figure out the end behavior very quick if it was not factored. If the function is factored, we can find the zeros pretty quick and their multiplicities. And either way, the y-intercept is not too bad to find. And we have a couple graphs now that gives us an idea of how to graph a polynomial function, whether the graph crosses the x-axis or touches the x-axis and turns around. And we have a couple problems where it falls to the left, falls to the right, and the other graph was falling to the left and rising to the right. So this finishes up the section on graphing polynomial functions. If you have any questions about graphing polynomial functions um, in the notes, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework problems on graphing polynomial functions, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about rational functions.